Hey collective, welcome back to my channel. I was using the Mary Magdalene deck and I was looking deep diving into some of the cards and I got some channeled downloads, some things that I want to talk about for this collective video. Now, I'm sure I'm going to put the title something along religious family abuse or religious family cults, okay? So that's what this video will be about. Before I get into this video, I just want to make a disclaimer that not all religious people are like this. Not all religious families are like this. And this is not us judging people that are religious. I personally think faith is a very important thing to have no matter what your belief system is. It's important to have faith, okay? Um, even if you're an atheist, like any form of faith that you, you know, resonate with is important, okay? It's important to have these things. So this is not me or this channel judging religion or religious uh, belief systems here, okay? This is simply about extremists. Now, extremists exist in every aspect of the world, okay? Whether it's religion, belief systems, politics, uh, even in uh, the entertainment industry, there's all kinds of extremist uh, energies in the world, okay? So this is about religious extremists. This is about extreme religion, extreme beliefs, extreme cases. Some of you may have came from a Mormon family, a Pentecostal family, some of you may have even had family that was Amish or something, you know. Some of you may have came from some sort of extreme Christianity branch or extreme Christianity uh, institution or organization or church um, that may have been leading families and being the families like ring leader pretty much, okay. Um, this could also be about people that have family that was extreme and Jehovah Witnesses. Um, there's probably other belief systems that I'm not thinking of right now, but on the top of my head, I'm thinking Mormon, uh, Jehovah Witness, Pentecostal, and just certain branches of Christianity and institutions, organizations, and churches um, from extreme Christianity. Now, a lot of people that are brought into this world, into families like that, we grow up not realizing that we're in sort of like this religious cult okay so you kind of grow up not really realizing it at first um, you're not allowed to do normal things like go to the movies or wear pants or to do this or to not do this with your hair um, not allowed to wear makeup or certain clothes maybe even not allowed to watch uh, TV or certain TV shows or maybe not even allowed to use the internet okay um, and for some of you, maybe um, if you're like much older, like in your 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, some of you may have had family members that thought the internet was of the devil or TV or entertainment was of the devil, but now they experience uh, these things for themselves now or they indulge in these things for themselves now. So it's a little bit hypocritical. Um, so definitely different messages for different people. Following God or any belief system is a personal choice. It's supposed to be a personal choice. And family should not be making that a choice for you. And family should not be disowning you for being a free thinker. Some of you grew up with constant threats of going to hell or burning in hell. Um, some of you were raised in a literal fear bubble. These families, these churches, these organizations are very ultra conservative and they're very controlling and manipulative. And these family dynamics destroy uh, people's lives. They will rip you apart piece by piece until there's nothing left but a shell of you. And they take time and years from you as well. They take experiences from you. They take, you know, you growing up and maturing. Sometimes they take those things away from you. And you guys, you're not allowing your family or these organizations to like take any more of your life, okay? Because a lot of times these families, these churches, these organizations, it starts, it feels like a prison. And some of you may be more accepting to what happened to you or your past, but you may have other family members that cannot move on or heal from this. 
Maybe some of you are having issues moving on or healing from this. These dynamics and these families, they damage generations. They use psychological warfare on the family members so that anytime you try to stand up to them or speak about what happened to others or to other people or to other family members or to a therapist or to a legal team, anytime you have to speak about what happened, it's more than likely going to re-traumatize you so it could be very hard for you to talk about these things, to speak up about these things, or to confront these things. A lot of you guys have been living under constant harsh judgments, and you've been living under a microscope, and this could have actually given you some sort of like anxiety disorder or some other type of mental health issue. A lot of you guys that click this video have experienced extreme spiritual abuse or religious abuse, which is the same. Um, and if not, then this may not just be your video. So leave this video for who it does resonate for. And because of this, this has made some of you turn the opposite of what your family was. Some of you turned to opposite belief systems. Some of you embraced your physical appearance and you started expressing yourself how you wanted to. Um, some of you may be dating outside of your family's religion or race. Uh, some of you may have embraced being LGBTQ. And a lot of times these religious families or churches or organizations, uh, guilt and redemption could have been like a reoccurring theme in your life because of these situations and these family members or these places. Um, they tend to instill shame and guilt in every single family member for pretty much having basic human thoughts or opinions. And even on this judgment card, it says the whole point is to be human. They shame you. They demonize you. They make you feel bad. Uh, they disown you. They judge you very harshly, sometimes even publicly or to other family members. They could say very harsh things to you or about you to your face or in public or to other people. They don't allow basic human thoughts, basic human opinions, basic human experiences. They don't allow that. For some of you, maybe even for someone specific, they didn't even give you basic human rights. Okay, so definitely different messages for different people. And a lot of times these family members, they act as if they are the antidote to your poisonous thoughts or your poisonous opinions or your poisonous actions or experiences. They feel like they're the only antidote to heal you or to save you or to not make you feel shame or guilt. There is a very strong psychological control within families like this, okay, or institutions like this. They will manipulate you to stay very close to them physically, emotionally, or spiritually, or all three. They tend to show favoritism to the family members that are brainwashed the most as well. And the road to healing when it comes to this situation, these experiences with families, churches, institutions, the road to healing is so very, very hard. But you all, all of you watching this, you are worth this personal work to heal. You're worth all of the personal work it takes to heal. You need to be allowing yourself to heal and to be free here. Also allow yourself to feel anger or release the guilt about being angry because a lot of these families and organizations, churches, institutions, they don't allow anger. There's this sense of having or needing to repress any negative human emotion, um, even including grief. Being angry is just a part of being human. It's a part of your human experience. And for some of you, your power is in your anger. Your anger could even be the key that sets you free. Your anger is your statement that you are worth more. You know, feeling anger also allows you to find peace and healing as well. It does lead you to healing. Once you can release that anger or express that anger, then you can heal. A lot of times thinking and speaking out is often seen as a violation to these families, to these churches, institutions. So you need to be speaking your truth. Speak your truth to yourself or to others. Make sure that you are honoring yourself and set yourself free here. 
but of course on your own time when you're ready or when you're able to and make sure that you are safe because sometimes these families, organizations, churches, institutions, they will send other members, family members, church members, organization members, whoever, to bother you or harass you uh, for leaving them. Um, it's very much a narcissistic control type of tactic. These type of families can create mental disorders, trauma, addictions, and a lot of codependency issues. A lot of you need to realize that you have the sanctuary within you. You carry a cathedral within you. The temple, the church is within you. Your body literally is the temple. Your body is literally the church, the cathedral here. And your family's version of love their version of who they want you to be is a version that no longer exists because you're free now. You're already free, or some of you, you're on the path, the, the journey to freedom from these types of people. The soul, I am free. You don't have to be bound to anything or anyone or to any belief system. Do what is right for you, what feels right for you. On this imagery, it looks like somebody is about to get on a bus or a train. I could even be speaking to someone that wants to take a train or a bus or a plane and they're just wanting to leave their city, their state, or their family behind. And this could be a confirmation for you. Know who you are. Remember who you are. Don't let other people, other churches, other organizations, other family members dictate who you are. You know who you are here. Don't feel like you have, you don't have a voice. You do have a voice and your voice matters. Your feelings, your emotions, your experiences, your traumas, everything does matter. And it is a part of your healing process, your healing journey. This is also a confirmation for some of you that you are no longer going to be silenced. Your throat chakra is extremely active and nothing is going to continue to silence you. Make sure that you're also speaking from your heart here too. I'm also noticing a rainbow. You could be seeing a rainbow or a rainbow could be symbolic, significant, or a confirmation for someone here. Also 513, okay, someone could be born on May 13th or be born in May or on the 13th day of any month. Also the Bible verse 513 could be significant to someone here. Possibly Matthews 513 or maybe Revelation 513. It could be any of the 513 verses. But that is your collective message, you guys. I love you guys so much from the bottom of my heart. I am wishing you all the best with your healing journey. Love you guys. Bye.